our project now. If you guys seen earlier in this video that we did get our wood delivery, as you guys can tell, Anthony has already started tearing down this pole barn. It's kind of bittersweet, I will say. Yeah. This was like our, I would say probably first biggest project we worked on together, besides the deck for Thunderdome. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I would say about, yeah. about that. Well, we did Thunderdome and then this. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we always knew this was just a temporary thing. We just wanted, it's been temporary for two years. I know. You know? <laughs> yeah. So we wanted it to at least look nice. That's how he stained it and painted it. And yeah. Now it's time to make it like permanent. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to this. Um, we've been uh, figuring things out, talking things over, and kind of getting a good game plan. And I think we have a good game plan now. This whole view on this side yard over here, guys, is going to change. Oh, getting the hammer out, I see. Well, <gasps> nails. Yeah. So we ended up putting um, screws and like finishing nails in this. Uh, hopefully it won't be too rough to get it out. No, I knew it. I don't want it to break. No. <laughs> I, I see you're moving it. Okay. It changes the whole field. It does, even just one piece, look. The whole field's changed. Yeah, it looks so different over here now. <laughs> Obviously, we want to save every piece of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, every so, piece of this, too, I mean. Well, as much as we can. That, that middle board right there is super bowed. What, this one? Yeah, this, this one. <laughs> this board, it's bowed. I said there was no support, like holding it this way. No. That's normal, the way we built it. We just did a quick, it's not really walls, you know, when we built this. Yeah. It's because we needed somewhere to keep all our tools out of the weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we put these here just to kind of help with the, the wall so it wasn't so, Yeah. you know. Well, it's just siding. We didn't frame walls. No. But we're going to be. Yeah. Very glad we built this to be able to uh, easily be taken down. Yeah. We did that on purpose with this in mind. Well, like you mentioned, we always knew that we were gonna eventually. Yeah, change this around. Yeah. Change the feel of this. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, I forgot one screw. It was all wet. <laughs> That's okay. We got to take that board off anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> it took care of it for itself. Now, some of these, I don't know if we're going to be able to reuse them unless we cut mm -hmm. off this. Like, look, this is all water rotted. Yeah. We, um, we stuck it in the ground on purpose. We did. We knew that. That's okay. Like I said, we knew that was going to happen on, on these back ones. Yeah. Okay. Well, we did kind of do like a French drain kind of thing right here. We did dig like a trench down and then we put the rock on top. But like Anthony said, this siding is like in the ground underneath all those rocks. So when it rains and if it's raining really good and we have a good downpour, like all the water like rushes like down slope and then hits the pole barn. And then a lot of times it will flow underneath if it's running really good or raining really good. But a lot of times it just gets stuck back here. Plus you got the rain coming off the roof on this side. So it just gets soaked, which we knew was gonna happen. That's part of the reason why we made sure to seal it and stain it. Yeah, so it went right, right away. <laughs> yeah, so at least Last we could- two years, like basically sitting in water. Yeah, I mean it's- On the bottom. I mean, yes, it's a little rotted out, but it's really not that bad, you know? It's not gonna last forever or it wouldn't. 
but well siding's not supposed to touch the ground anyway no 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 no. and this did yeah you know yeah we needed it there. yeah it was up against there i mean like i said the water would flow and it probably would be you know sitting in water for a while look how crazy that is i said it feels like just yesterday i was filming us recording a uh, building it now yeah. we're, we are tearing it down now we're tearing it down <laughs> yeah <laughs> York, I'm more excited about this project than any other project in a long time. Yeah. I would say since the kitchen build. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say this. I do have a lot of canned goods that are ready to go in this uh, canning room when it's done. I've been busy, huh? The pantry? Yeah. We'll call it the pantry. There you go. The pantry room. We'll call it the pantry room. Roxy's den. Roxy's food store again. Roxy's food house. Yeah, Roxy's food house. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you would think because it's rotten or rotty, the nails would come out a lot easier, huh? Well, I think we started putting that side on first. So the overlap. Yeah. I think that's what it is. I think you are correct on so that. So we're pulling it out backwards so it's hard to get out. That's okay. Yeah. Not that big of a deal. No. We're gonna be getting new siding, most likely, guys, for this thing anyway. Oh uh, yeah. Um, I might use this to build like another coop or something that we might need. Go pen something. Go pen something. Yeah. Separated for the dog run. Something. Yeah. I don't. I don't know yet. Yeah, we'll definitely save this. Yeah, this is, I mean, look at it. It's still brand new on this yeah. side. For no, the most I mean, part. This, and then I mean, you could realistically just cut that stuff off and use it. Yeah, the rot stuff. So yeah. It, yeah. For something. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I think those were scrap woods to begin with. Yep. It was. Hi, Sylvia. You coming over here to see what's going on? What are you doing to my hideout? She's like, hey, wait a minute. This is the place I go when it's raining and snowing and cold outside. <laughs> that board is super bowed too. All, all these boards in here are like leftovers and bow city. Yeah, for the shelves. Yeah, well, there's they're literally just board laid down with like a couple nails to make some shelves to hold stuff. Yeah. So of course they're gonna bow. There's no you know support to keep them from bowing. Yeah. You know, it was all scrap wood showing. Yeah, it was uh, one of those random ideas. We're like, hey, we should put some shelves back here, you know? Yeah, just to Old do whatever. Stuff. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Don't want anybody to step on these. Of it's good. Like I said, I'm gonna use this for scrap stuff for like the coops and the pens and animal stuff. Yeah, whatever else in the future we may need, huh? Yep. What's going on, brother? It is hot out here today. I know I that. Can, I can see that. Man. But good news, it's down to 95. He's, right? been, he's been waiting for this day. Man, I heard there were some 
chicks here to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been two months in the making now. Man. The first ones, you got the other three, you got four three. more. Yep, three, and now the final four makes it seven in the flock. I am excited right here. Oh, I hear them chirping. <laughs> I will say they're not as loud as the other ones, but they do get a little crazy. Oh, hello. Hello, but they're pretty. Yeah, they're really pretty. Yep. Yeah. I'm so happy to see a couple more white ones and uh, brown ones. These are, so, I, I absolutely love these colors. These are so beautiful. Yeah, that one that you're holding, I think it's really pretty. Yeah, that was that was actually the first one that hatched. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and, then, this. and this one was the last one to hatch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see you. I see you. I, I mean, they're all pretty. You. I love baby uh, Yeah. How can you not, right? Yeah. Well, they're very well, cute. Everybody loves little babies, yeah. right? All, all animals, even all babies are wonderful. Yeah, bunnies, puppies, kittens, it don't matter. Stop being so scared. Come here. Well, I'm gonna miss having them in the house and hearing them chirp all the time. Chirp, 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 chirp. chirp, yeah, chirp. It's been really cool, like waking up in the morning and hearing that. Lissa and I like to go out and sit by the chickens in the morning time and have our coffee and kind of wake up and stuff like that. Yeah, and watch them. We'll watch the chickens run around. Oh, they're scratching so much now. They're scratching oh, yeah. good. That's cool. Oh, we even found at Walmart, they sell it by the tub. It's like chicken treats. It's uh, different kinds of like mealworms yep. and stuff like that. And you give it one scoop a day and today was day two and they're loving it. Oh, that's cool. Oh, it's a really good source of protein. You'll be all right. So like I said, I don't know if these are hens or roosters. I don't know. I just know that they're very cool. Right. And they're getting their feathers, so. Um, are you trying to bury your head? Go ahead. So my advice is, um, since the other ones are bigger, they're like a month older, keep them in like um, the little coop you have yep. or something, right? Until they get tote. a little, yeah, or tote. Yeah. Inside your, your yeah. chicken run already, you have that little uh, chicken coop area. Yeah. I'd keep them in there. Don't introduce them until dark. Oh, okay. When you get home today, don't just put them in there. Right. No, no. Tonight, put them in there when it's dark. In there, and then that way when they wake up, like they're bird brains. They're bird brains. They won't even realize that there's something new. It would just be all normal. I'm excited. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. And Wyatt, I know it was your birthday a little while ago, but we got you a little belated gift. Ooh, that's nice. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> With each birthday, you will learn many new lessons on the path to enlightenment. 20 bucks. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> nice. Just what, reading the card. Yeah, what does it say? What does the rest of the card say? Today's lessons, not all birthday cards contain money, but this one does. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, love ya. Aww. How nice, what do you say? Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. I am back at it guys, in the kitchen right now, and um, went to the grocery store the other day and happened to find peaches. <laughs> I already kind of had in the back of my mind that peaches are in season right now, so I was able to get them at a fairly decent price. Um, and I want to make some jam. Actually, I'm gonna make some peach bourbon jam. Um, it's been, like I mentioned, it's been quite a few years since I made it. I wanna say I made it before uh, we even left for Vegas. So this is really good jam. I can, the way I can describe it, how it tastes, it almost tastes just like honey. It is so good on biscuits, uh, banana bread, anything. It's, it's just really good jam. So I'm very excited to get this started. I do need to peel uh, my peaches. And uh, I had to do a little bit of research this morning to kind of figure out how to do that because I couldn't remember. But you peel them just like you do uh, tomatoes. Uh, I got my hot water boiling and my ice bath right there ready to go. So I'm gonna see how easy it is to peel them. <laughs> Peeling them that way, like blanching them is not working out very well. I don't know if I'm like not doing something right. Um, I just, I, it starts off good, but then it like gets really, gets tough. I can't peel them off. So 
I'm kind of just taking my knife and just kind of like lightly going over the tops of them and kind of like pulling them. I will say blanching them does help make the skins a little bit softer so I, I don't I'm not losing as much peach while I'm peeling them with the knife. I can't remember the last time when I did this how it all worked out for me because it's been like I mentioned quite a few years since I've made it so I have done some experimenting to try to figure out an easy way to peel these peaches and I have found just doing it the old school way with the knife and just peeling them without even blanching them is probably the easiest um, I just have to be a little careful about how much I'm peeling so I don't lose a lot of the you know the meat part um, I even pulled out my apple peeler cutter thing that I got um, just to try and see if maybe that would work and it didn't work out very well um, I tried blanching them for you know a fairly amount of time you know decent amount of time and blanching them and putting them in the ice water leaving them in there for a little while that didn't seem to help out if you guys have an easier way to maybe peel these peaches uh, comment below and let me know because I'm all about it but for the meantime because I do I don't have too much left to peel so I'm just gonna go ahead and just peel them by hand And diced up. It's a pretty good amount. Um, I got four pounds worth of peaches and it pretty much filled up this bowl. I will say this did take way longer to peel and dice these peaches up than um, I was really expecting it to take. Um, I will say um, I did eventually pull out my actual peeler and I found that that worked way better than just peeling it with a knife. Now comes the fun and exciting part. Let's turn this into jam. Peaches have cooked down for a little while. I actually kind of turn them off and just kind of let them sit here and cool down before because I am going to puree them down so they're nice and have a nice texture to this jam. The bourbon. <laughs> I'm not a huge bourbon fan, but I do got some of that Jim Bean Kentucky bourbon there, which is nice. And this is, I think, what kind of gives it that flavor. It's gonna cook down for a little bit before I can this, so you won't, you know, you guys know how it works with alcohol when you cook with it. Man, yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yes, it's a lot of sugar, but that's what the recipe calls for, and I like sweet jam, so. Gonna add all of that in there. I almost forgot probably one of the most important ingredients for this jam, the ginger. <laughs> Good thing I looked back over at the recipe just to make sure I was doing things correctly because I 
finally got them in the canner. I'm gonna add the lid right now because they are boiling and actually I was I thought I was only gonna get six jars because um, that's what the recipe said and I followed the recipe to the T um, and I ended up actually getting six or sorry eight jars of jam so I thought that was a pretty good score there on those um, uh, peaches there so it ended up actually being cheaper to make them like way cheaper to make your own so as I mentioned I'm only water bath canning this time so I don't have the lid like on there and tight it's just sitting on top just so some of the steam and stuff can come out of there but if you listen you can definitely hear that they're boiling in there there they are I actually got nine jars I somehow miscalculated or miscounted but so far they're all sealed and they look really really pretty they got a really nice color and all in all I think that was a little pretty successful little um, I, I wouldn't even say it's a harvest because I bought them at the grocery store but all in all I think that for I think I had four pounds of uh, peaches and making nine jars of peach bourbon jam I think that's a it's a pretty good score right there for myself I will say, the view and the feel really changed over here with these walls off. Open it up. Yeah, it did. Open it up. It looks nice, it does. It opens up our backyard, I'll say that. Um, but we are going to stop ripping out the siding uh, where we're at. We have that back corner over there. I and mean, the only reason why is because we still have our tools and stuff over there on that back corner, as you guys know. We moved all, everything over there. So we're gonna leave that side on for right now. Um, you know knowing our luck it will probably rain even though it doesn't show rain but uh you know how it is sometimes murphy's law you know so we're just gonna leave like i said how it is um and then kind of like work you know move things around as we work you know what you thinking i'm just looking yeah thinking of how to deconstruct it without it falling over Kind well, a, a good a good thing is is we have four by four posts all around, and they they are all cemented in the ground, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And as long as the top stays put together for right now, it should be okay. Like the roof. I'm trying to get some measurements and like a feel. Cause it's not a house, right? That it's not gonna be a house. It's a storage canning room. Pantry, thing, right? <laughs> yeah, we called it a pantry room. I just wanna. I'm curious to see what these are. Eighty-three. That's how tall the walls are in here. Yeah, from floor to floor to top plate right here. Okay. Which I just wanna get a feel, cause over there. The back wall where it sloped the low side, um, it's right around seven feet from where we're going to put the flooring. I just want to, and this is about the same. So I think that's going to work just fine. All these spiders, like, man, I've been living in this corner for two years. Yeah, what, what happened to my house? I've been living in this corner for two years and you guys just ripped it all up. Remember? Yeah. Because this is basically. I'll make sure we don't have to do anything drastic. And that is seven feet to the top of that post. So it's the same. Because see, we're gonna be redoing this and going all the way up to these the top of these posts. The wall. Yeah. All this is gonna have to come off, all that stuff. So that's that's how high the wall is going to be. So when I'm standing, I mean, it's still up here. Yeah, and then the roof, right? Yeah, well, it's going to be up. So I think that's good. I think we 
We're good. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> well, we made these, I think, when we built this. I have to go back and check the video, but I'm pretty sure we made sure these were eight feet out of the ground. Yeah, I think they're 10 foot poles. Yeah. And they I are. think we buried them. We buried two them feet two down. feet. So we left eight feet out. And then we cut off the excess of what we didn't need. I think these ones, though, these are, are 12, 12 foot footers. Poles. So there's 10 feet sticking out on yeah. this side. Yeah. These are going to have to be cut down to. Yeah. Level, right? Level for those. Yeah. Yep. But these are the short ones. Yep, so you can't go higher. Yeah, and this corner right I just here. I make sure it was going to be good. Is the highest corner, I think, in this whole pole barn. So yep. this is right here. This is going to be our starting corner for everything. So now that we got the <clears throat> siding ripped off, we're kind of like walking around and checking measurements, right? And man, guys, this is going to be a big canning room. Um, let me. Pantry. Uh, yeah, pantry, sorry. Yes, pantry. Call it yeah, we'll call it a pantry room. It's gonna be a b decent sized pantry room. Let me show you. Well, just so you guys know, maybe you can, we've already explained this, but just in case you missed it, okay? This square, this 10 by 10 section, where all the tools are at, that's gonna be a separate room yeah. to this thing. So we're gonna be building a wall, like from here, like this post to this post. Yep. To separate this off. And then this is all going to be open. Yeah. So basically okay. all the siding that's been removed, this is all of the, the pantry room. And just so you guys know, this is only two feet narrow, more narrow than Thunderdome. Yeah. So it's pretty big. Yeah, it is a for a pantry. Yeah. The length of it's the same. As yeah. The, by 10. Yeah. And Thunderdome is 20 by 12. Yeah. So, um, I'm just, this is going to be more yeah. than enough to store like dry goods, canned goods, our freezers, an extra refrigerator, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that, and all shelving all the way around. We, we're, we're trying to just design it in our minds right now. Leave a comment down below, like, maybe give us some ideas. What do you guys think? Like, yeah. we have ideas in our mind. But a lot of times we'll have an idea spark because of something you guys say. Yeah. Like, hey, have you ever thought about this? Oh, yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. So feel free. <laughs> feel free. If this was yours, imagine it's an open room. We're going to put a door. Yep. And it's meant for storage, food storage. What would you guys do? Yeah. I'm curious to see what you guys would, would say. Got it? I think it's just like, like two inch win or two foot windows, like the laundry room. Yeah. I go in the middle, one in the middle, or two and two. But we're trying to think of shelf space. Yeah, wall or space. Or you put a window, shelf. you lose a shelf space. Yeah, well, you, yeah, and the door. <laughs> and then we do have um, heating and cooling and stuff. We got to think about too that we need to figure that's out gonna, where. That's going to be easier though. We just need to know where on the wall. That's what I'm saying. We gotta know where. Go. I'm more like leaning for that, like right here. So it's probably a good spot. That way, all that long wall is not touched. Well, and I was thinking when it when it's blowing, right? It's blowing this, this way. way, right? Put it right in the middle of this wall. Right yeah. Here. Right in the middle. And no window. Yeah, no window right here. We'll put no window, and then we'll put windows maybe here, like you said. Maybe one window. And then uh, we'll have the door. We're thinking the door is going to go here on this corner. That way you can just walk, you know, the path here. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, we could put one window on that side, maybe like one right here, and then put the freezers right here. Well, we don't put any windows on this side because it's where the sun's at, right? You got to think you want to stay cool and heated, right? Yeah. So maybe we just put a window on that side. Maybe. On, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right, like I said, right here. And I was thinking like the freezers and stuff can go on this wall right here. Yeah. Or on that back wall right there against the, put the freezers over there. Something, I don't know. It's really cool guys, because we get to start from scratch in a sense, right? Yeah. It's like we starting all over, a brand new fresh build. Yeah, it's from, exciting. Almost from scratch. Yeah. 
<sighs> all right well now all we got to do left guys to start physically working like with wood and stuff on this we're gonna have to rake all these rocks down make it more level so we can actually get to this area we're gonna do all the, the whole thing rake down and then we're gonna be able to start um, getting the plans together for the flooring so now that we started tearing down the pole barn would you say it was easier to tear it down or harder way easier <laughs> demolishing things in a sense it's always easier than trying to figure out the cuts and line things up and blah blah blah. Yeah, it's funny when so. you were tearing down the siding and like you were you already had like three pieces down. Yeah. I was like, man, it took you like not as much time to put the take it down than it did to put you up. Yeah, it took weeks to put up and all half an hour, hour, two hours to bring down. Yeah, all that hard work on the siding that we did. <laughs> Cause that was the first time we had ever done siding with no, the pole it, barn. Yeah, no, it was a lot easier to obviously tear it down was it more fun or would you have i had more fun putting it up building it like, yeah. than tearing it down <laughs> but this is turning out great so far babe i'm really really excited i can't wait to start working on this floor oh yes me too